In this lesson, we'll cover creating structural schedules. So we're looking at a structural model. And to see current schedules in this project, scroll down in the project browser in the lower left until you get to schedules. When you get to schedules and quantities, go ahead and expand that. Here we can see there's one schedule for concrete beams. Go ahead and double click it. This will open up the actual schedule. If you want to edit a schedule and see the same information you're presented when scheduling or making a schedule, look in the properties area on the left. Scroll down to other. Here you have all of the editable settings for fields, filter, sorting, formatting, and appearance. If you click edit to the right of fields, you see the fields on the right currently in this schedule. Clicking the filter tab shows if there's a filter applied. This one has a filter where the mark has to contain the letter B. Sorting in group tells the schedule how it should be sorted. Sorting is by mark. The formatting tab actually formats each of the fields and its justification within itself. You also can choose to hide fields. In appearance, the last tab is the appearance of the actual schedule table itself. Click OK. Now that we've seen a schedule, how do we go about creating one? Well, let's first close this schedule by clicking the X in the upper right. Now to create a schedule, let's go to the View tab. Once on the View tab in the Create panel, click the drop down for Creating a Schedule in Quantities. When clicking Schedule in Quantities, you can actually filter the list to only show structural schedules. So go ahead and uncheck mark architecture, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. So the only thing checked is structure. With structure being the only thing checked, here are the structural schedules that can be created. Let's scroll down to structural framing. This is where we can make a structural framing schedule. Go ahead and select it. You can give a new name or accept the default name. And our phase right now is new construction. Click OK. Now we're back to that same schedule property window we saw before. This is where we can define the fields that we want within the schedule table. Let's choose the first field by the name of type. So scroll down and select type, click add. Now for two other types of columns to add, I'm going to choose cut length, add it, and then choose count. You can add other fields if you want to this schedule table, but for this example, I'm only choosing three. You also can add parameters or calculated values if you wanted to in the middle. Click the Filter tab. This is where we can filter out data or in data. For example, maybe I wanted to create a filter to look at just specific lengths of framing elements that are longer than a certain number of feet. For example, anything over 25 feet. We're going to leave the filters out for this example. Click Sorting and Grouping. Here we can tell Revit how to sort the schedule. So let's first sort by type. And if you want a header row with this, I can check mark header row. If you want a blank line between the groups, I can click blank line on the right. Then you could say, well, a secondary sort, let's sort by cut length, showing the shortest first and the longest later. I'm not going to include a header row, and I'm not going to include a blank line between each item. Now let's click Formatting. Here's where you can change the name of the heading, its positioning or orientation, and its alignment. You can also choose to hide the field if you want by choosing Hidden Field. We're going to leave these all as is. And the last tab is Appearance. How do you want the elements within the schedule to appear? We'll leave these as is as well. Go ahead and click OK. This will then produce the schedule table. You can drag the lines between the columns to increase or decrease the column size. You can also use the tools on the ribbon to insert columns, delete columns, resize them, or even hide them. The appearance settings are on the right, where you can control the appearance of fonts, the shading, or even the borders. So depending upon how you filtered and sorted your schedule table, it may or may not look like mine. Since I chose to group by type, I have a heading in the gray area between the actual groups for the type. I could hide the column for A for type if I wanted to, since there's a heading. 
Then it's sorted by cut length, and I can change that if I want to by clicking edit on the left for sorting a group. And I can see all of my cut lengths are actually listed in this schedule table. So as a review, in this lesson, we looked at creating structural schedules. We first looked at an existing schedule. We looked at how we can edit that schedule, editing the fields, filter, sorting and grouping, formatting, and the appearance of the schedule. Then we created a new schedule. We actually went to the View tab on the ribbon, chose to create a new schedule, selected a specific structural schedule type, chose our fields for the schedule, set the filters, the sorting grouping, and reviewed the format and the appearance, and then created the schedule.